All right, Homesteader family, welcome back to the journey. Thank you for being a part of the journey. And don't forget to share the journey. And welcome to this edition of the Sunday Monday Vlog with me and Mr. Max. Because we know every time I go to film, he likes to be up on the couch with me. Right, books? Right. Well, this week has been a slow, slow, tiring week due to the fact I've been hibernating because of the bitter, bitter cold. Now, I've had all different people uh, comment on different things and send me messages and all that type of stuff. And I've gotten a couple comments now on what is trailer life like? Trailer life like, yeah. And uh, for me, it's horrible because I don't have running water. So that's a huge, huge downside. Uh, if I had running water, it'd be a totally different story. If I could take a shower every day, uh, be able to do dishes so I can, uh, cook meals and everything else, it would make life so much more simpler in a way. I hate doing dishes, but I hate eating microwave and frozen dinners and stuff like that. So I would love to be able to cook turkeys and hams and roast and all different things again, like I used to. So, that's trailer life for me. Uh, I can't really speak on it, except if you don't have running water, it really uh, is not a enjoyment. But I got my babies. They take care of me. And there's nothing like snuggling up with my mouses. Now, I just turned off the camper heater because there's it makes a loud noise. Uh, it's not silent. Something's wrong with it. I don't know. I tried to screw the plate down and everything I've tried. I don't know. I don't work on campers, but I turned it off so I can film. And I want to show you just how cold it is outside. Let's see if my windows. I mean, look at that is all ice. That's all ice, 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 ice on the camper. Uh, in the windows. All the windows are like that. And of course, down here, I'm actually going to have to go in this other way. I've got my portable heater. So I had that hooked up with the propane tank inside the shower unit. And between that on these really, really cold days and the camper heater, I have no problem. Let's see. Right now, it's like almost 70 degrees in here. About 68 degrees in here. And uh, that's because I have a camper heater turned off now. And uh, it takes a little while for everything to shut down. So once I turn that back on, I'll be back up. I have it set, I think, at 72 uh, degrees. And between the two campers, or the two heaters, the camper heater, the portable heater, I stay nice and warm. I got a lot of people asking me, if I'm cold, if I, you know, if I got wear a bunch of clothes, a uh, little too much information, but I don't like to sleep with clothes and I'm able to do that in the camper. So without that portable heater, there'd be no way uh, to keep this camper warm on these bitter, bitter cold days. We have high, high winds right now. Probably, I want to say gusting up to 50, maybe 60 mile an hour winds right now. It's just bitter, bitter cold. And with all that wind and everything, it, it just sucks the heat right out of all the walls. And that's why with the house, I plan to build a house inside the mountain with dirt on three of the walls. So with the wind, the bitter cold, the high elevation, the thinner air, none of that's going to matter because the house will have the three walls underground for better insulation. And... uh during the day, the glass will soak in all the sunlight on the sunny days, which Colorado has, I think, like 320 days a year of sunshine. So that's another reason why I love Colorado. We don't have the storm clouds all the time or the cloudiness. And uh, that will keep the house warm during the winter. Not sure what my heating plans are going to be, but I'll figure that out. And that's pretty much it on the trailer life. So, big things that have happened this week. Hmm. 
I got my engineering plans. I have to go down this week and pay them for that. Uh, they only took cash or check. I only had credit cards on me. So I have to go down and pay them this week once my crypto money clears my bank account. So that should be in either tomorrow or Tuesday. Go down and get that taken care of. I, like I said, got the engineering plans. I went to the county building. They have everything they need, they said, for the building permit. They just have to have their supervisor guy go over it. Once they clear everything, then they're calling me or they're going to email me to go down since I'll have cell service up here uh, to sign for the building permit. And then I think my building permit's like $4,000. So I'm going to have to pull out more crypto as soon as I know exactly how much I owe the county on that. And then the building permit's good for a year. And then, of course, I can always pay again to renew it just like I did with the septic system permit. And went to code enforcement, talked to them. They're happy with all the progress I got. They're going to void out the contract that I signed with them as soon as I get the building permit. And they're going to reassign me a new contract uh, under the building permit number that I get. Because the agreement I signed with them is only good for a year. And that expires, I believe, in August or September. And... Since all the bad things happened with contractors and builders in 2019. Uh, I'm basically running out of time on that one. So by them renewing with the new building permit. Then I'll be set for a year out from whenever I sign the new contract. So like I said, I'm good with the county. Good with the sheriffs. Good with animal control. Uh, good with code enforcement. Um, good with the feds. Good with everybody. So, that makes life a lot easier when everybody works with you and you're willing to work with them. Uh, I've seen people down at the county building um, hollering and cussing and all that that don't get you nowhere. And, you know, you get disrespect, then they don't work with you and you basically get disrespected back. Where I was respectful, I worked with them, and... They're working with me. They're not saying, hey, bub, get down to the city. You can't live on your land and make me have to drive 50 miles or 48 miles up here every day, take care of the animals and so on and so forth like I used to do. So it's a good thing I don't have to do all that. So that's all taken care of. And then I believe, I think it was either Thursday or Friday. I'm not sure for those of you that didn't see the pictures I put up on YouTube. I went down to town. I picked up the last pallet of feed that I had paid for uh, down at Tractor Supply. Boogs. He's trying to lay underneath the tripod. He's got to be close to the camera. Um, I went down and got the last pallet of feed from Tractor Supply that I had prepaid from last year. So now I'm out of pallets of feed. And then Tractor Supply just sent me another 10% off coupon. And then... By buying more pallets, after 20 bags, I get 5% off. So it's technically 15% off. And I have to use that by the 26th of this month. So I'm probably going to put another $4,000 of feed on my credit card. And then I won't have to pay credit card for a month. So that gives crypto time to hopefully turn around and start going back up. Because I'm down right now. And when I came home uh, with the feed, I had it fed the animals because since I was getting the feed I figure I just feed them when I come back uh, he's chewing on a beef bone and I pick up the first sack of feed and I go in to feed the animals and the dogs go nuts and I'm trying to figure out what the dogs are going nuts over well Thelma had a little baby girl goat so we have a new addition to the ranch. I put up some photos. Uh, I filmed a little bit for you guys. So you see that. Uh, that was a big uh, thing happening. The other big thing that happened on Friday was the kangaroo passed his medical exams. Got his health certificate and all that taken care of. Uh, the gentleman from the uh, Buffalo, New York, from the pet shop in New York, the breeder, uh, contacted me tonight. Uh, told me that 
Uh, he's working with Delta right now to try to secure a plane ticket. And it's not, I, I thought it was something you could just call Delta, book it, and it goes. No, it's more complicated than that. So he believes he's got to call them back again tomorrow. He believes he has everything set for Thursday or Friday. He's not completely sure. So hopefully it looks like this upcoming week. I'll be getting my little Joey, and uh, that's exciting news. And I, I just can't wait for a baby kangaroo, because that's going to be so interesting. Because, I mean, I know there's tons of people out there that have baby kangaroos and regular size kangaroos. But if you look in the grand scheme of everything, there's only probably like 10% of the world has a pet kangaroo. And I'm going to be one of them, just like camels, just like Azores. Uh, it's like once in a lifetime thing. And uh, I can't wait to be driving down the road with his head out the window, the dog's heads out the window. And people are like, what did I just see? Like, take two, three looks like, is that really a kangaroo? And uh, I really, really want to get a girl. I just... Unless crypto goes back up where it was, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get a girl anytime soon. Of course, they can't breed until they're 18 months old, a year and a half old, and they only have eight babies throughout their lifetime. They live to about 20 years old, and uh, somebody's got to repopulate the kangaroos, especially after the Australian fire and everything like that. And I'm going to do a video, I've been thinking about it for a while now, after the South American uh, Amazon fires, and now Australia's on fires, and explain my thoughts on the whole animal culture of captivity, and breeders, and everything like that. And uh, that's going to be a whole other video all together, when I have the time to sit down and do another video. Uh, like I said, until I hit 5,000 subscribers and um, um, my YouTube income starts increasing, I'm just going to stick with the Sunday, Monday vlogs right now just because i got to focus more time on the ranch, getting things done here, um, and doing things like that. So, uh, projects this week, I didn't really get much done because of the bitter cold. I did get the parking lot cleaned up. I'll show you that video. I got the shipping container moved. Uh, and that was pretty much it. I'm taking the dogs out on walks every day. Even in the bitter cold, I, I bundle up with snow pants and hoodies and jackets and pants and everything else. So I'm all layered out. It's still bitter, bitter cold with face mask and all that, but gets me out to camper. I, you don't want to get cabin fever in a camper by just staying in camper all the time. And the dogs love to go out and uh, go along the fence and mark their territory. And most of the goats will go out on walks. And that's pretty much it for this week. So, like I said, hopefully next Sunday, Monday vlog, I'll have the baby Joey here. Uh, I might have some more baby goats. And if everybody can take a moment and just visit the website again, homesteader.today. And just check out a couple pages so it pops up on YouTube, or not YouTube, on Google. And Google will associate my website. And for those of you that don't always catch the videos, I also, every Sunday, now on the website, I'm putting updates. So everybody can see new animals coming in. Um, new babies born on the ranch. How the animals are doing uh, daily, or not daily, weekly um chores type things and stuff like that so again it's homesteader.today and stay tuned for the rest of the video enjoy it and i'll see you guys next week all right out here on one of our hikes i found a major major problem over here where i'm putting my hand in front of me i'm gonna have to put a bunch of snow fence up because apparently all the wind blows across this hilltop and packs all this snow. Now I've been down here with the shov shovel digling, ugh, digging the snow out. And you can see it's come pretty much up to the top. Uh, just over halfway. 
it was piled up and like I said I've been digging and the dogs could potentially jump the fence so this is a major problem I'm gonna have to fix come springtime okay so this was an all-day project junking my front yard up you can see all this stuff just piled up here in the yard but the reason I did that was because all this junk was in the parking lot and I'm tired of trying to maneuver around stuff I'm tired of the, sh the shipping container was all the way out the way and trying to walk back and forth with stuff from the shipping container was pain in the butt used to be way up there by those rocks now it's down here so it's quicker to open and walk through the gate than it is going back and forth down the parking lot and then trying to back trailers in and trying to turn vehicles around in the parking lot was just pain in butt so i got rest of stuff here that i have to haul out um, i just haven't got around to it yet and then all the dirt from the house site i'm gonna fill all this in and then move the shipping container over closer to the fence probably about five maybe ten feet away from the fence and then that gives me the entire parking lot for when i open up in june of course that side too and uh it's just a beautiful beautiful day so that's the work i got done and then i'm getting ready to hop in the truck now uh, the trailer is completely filled. I went ahead and finished unboxing the other four picnic tables to get all the cardboard and stuff out of here. And I'm going to head to the dump, get everything out of the trailer, and that should be good for another couple months. All right, Homesteader family. So I just got back from a nighttime hike. We just got a bunch of snow. It's Thursday night. And Minnie Mouse is a bad mama dog because she taught all the boys how to jump fences. So the fence that goes around this area uh, over to here, uh, the three foot and a half fence, uh, the dogs hop over it. And they run up over that mountain, down the other side, up the other mountain, and all the way over to the gate on 16. So I just went and fetched all the boys. And the great part is it just snowed tonight. So it was a nice cool hike. Didn't have to worry about being hot. And the camera doesn't pick it up well. But it's like daylight out here. You can see everything. Uh, the mountains you can't see because they're still covered in snow. And that's my breath going by. It's uh, 6 degrees out. But it is beautiful. So people wonder why I live in the mountains. Where else can you hike in the mountains where it's like daylight in the middle of the night? This is the life of a homesteader. This is the life of happiness. And that is why I have chosen to live this lifestyle. And that's big old Mickey Mouse. Uh, took the trash to the dump today and then I stopped by the butchers and picked them up a box of beef bones. So Mickey's right there. We got Minnie Mouse on the left, Chubbs on the right. And I think Boogs is over here, Mr. Max. He's chewing on a bone there. And yep, I still have Christmas lights up. And they're not coming down. For a while, because it's winter time, and there's only so much light in a day. It's always so dark, right, Minnie Mouse? Right. See my girl. So I'm gonna let them chew on some bones for a couple more minutes, and then I'm gonna get them in the house. Uh, on our hike, on the far side of that mountain, over in the next valley, uh, the Cleopatra. And Caesar the camels are over there. There's a tree almost on my property line. It's on my neighbor's property line. But all the branches hang over the fence. And it gives a nice shelter area. Kind of like this tree that the animals used to go under. Uh, so those two are over there. The horses, uh, Girl and Gunner, were up at the top up there. So was 
uh, the donkeys. And that's all I saw. Uh, a lot of animals are going into the big park area in the trees for shelter. Even though they have those two shelters there, which some of the cows are in those. And then the shipping container on the other side in the other valley uh, has not been used yet. So don't know why nobody's using it, but that was another $3,000 spent on animals that don't use it. So I'm headed in. I'll talk to you guys later. All right, Homesteader family, I just went to town to pick up a pallet of feed. So I'm back in the truck and I've got a major, major surprise. I just got home. I'll be right back with you. Thelma had a baby. That's a beautiful baby. That's a beautiful little baby. Tell us a mama again. Yeah. She tell us a mama's. <laughs> Look at that pretty baby. That, that was someone's other baby. And this is her new baby. So look at the difference. Different color. Let's see. It is a girl. So we got another girl joining the herd. Yeah. All right, before I lock Thelma and the baby up, the mouses want to check out the baby. Okay, so the baby squealed. 
scared of the camel, almost got stepped on. So I brought the shelter over here, the water trough, and made a pen to put Thelma and the baby in. And they're going to stay here until the baby's a little bit better on uh, the baby's feet and uh, isn't squealing and everything else. And uh, then I'll bring them back in with the rest of the animals and everything should be good.